Friends family, today is September 29, 2016. I am in Lower Manhattan in the Financial District by a park called City Hall Park. And the reason that's why I'm here today is to take a look at an exhibit that has been here for a couple of months. And today, September 29, 2016, is the last day uh, that the exhibit is going to be up. It will be taken down and in the near future, another exhibit will come up. Uh, we'll be taking a look around uh, and uh, if you have any questions or comments regarding, regarding the works that we will take a look, make sure to post them in the comment section of this video, either on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, the area where I find myself right now is again the southern end of Manhattan, directly across the street from where I am is uh, the Woolworth building, this building that was the tallest building in the world from 1913 up until uh, 1929. So from 1913, 1929, the tallest building in the world, uh, Broadway, Park Place, as you can see the street sign directly across the street. And the City Hall Park is just right over here. Now, the works that we'll be taking a look at today are described on this sign over here. Uh, the exhibit is made possible by the Public Art Fund, a New York organization that has been operating, if I'm not mistaken, since the 1970s. And they've been organizing art exhibits in the public spaces of New York City. They also have other exhibits currently on view in different sections of New York. I'll be making video blogs about those exhibits in those other sections. Uh, the one that we'll be taking a look at today is called The Language of Things. And it's been up since June 29 to September 29. This is going to be a relatively lengthy video because we'll be taking a look at the work of six artists. Uh, as you can see, they're Carol Bovey, Claudia Comte, uh, Michael Dean, Adam Pandleton, Tino Siegel, Chris Watson, and Hannah Wiener. One, two. Actually, seven artists. I think I said six. Seven artists. Uh, and uh, again, this exhibit explores language and communication. As uh, from the literature that we can see over here, language is not limited to the forms, uh, to the form of words. From the glow of a lamppost or the curve of a bench to a bird's song, we are constantly in dialogue with what theorist Walter Benjamin called the language of things. This exhibition speaks to our innate attempts to understand and read patterns inherent in the world around us. The show features new and exciting objects, a live artwork, sound installation, and poetry suggestive of different forms of coded communication, both man-made and natural, between a person and an object, among people and nature, or connecting people with one another. Uh, we'll, we'll start walking so that the video doesn't take too long, and then the first work that we encounter as we enter from the western side of the park is this one over here, consisting of just four speakers, uh, that are organized in the shape of a square. This one is by artist Chris Watson. He is a British artist and he, the work is called The Ring Angels. Uh, now, the inspiration for this work were uh, starlings. Uh, starlings uh, which fly in formation and flocks as you can see here in this uh, depiction here. And they have a very intricate way of um, a very particular experience that we don't usually think about. And what this artist has done, he has basically recorded starlings and uh, created these speakers and arranged these speakers in this square form so that if we step inside, we are able to, in a sense, connect to this world that is otherwise inaccessible to us because it's, uh, as you can imagine, a flock of starlings flying up in the air. We don't really um, have a connection to that world, but via this work, we do have one. Let's step a little bit closer. It's going to get a bit louder, but nevertheless, it's going to provide us a very nice, uh, interesting connection to this world that we usually do not visualize or do not have access to.
there you have it, Chris Watson's the Ring Angels. The next work that we'll be taking a look at is located directly across from uh, Watson's uh, Ring Angels. And this, is, uh, uh, this one is very particular looking. They look like uh, uh, the ears of rabbits that are popping up from the ground. So in a way, um, having us visualize a creature uh, directly under the ground from where we are, and this is the only element that we can see over here. It uh, cons consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, seven sculptures uh, that are made out of marble and this is the work of Claudia Comte. Claudia Comte is from Switzerland and it's called the Italian Bunnies. Now this site responsive installation from the literature that we have over here reading uh, this site responsive installation of seven, seven marble sculptures reflect a Claudia Comte's interest in repetition, pattern and sort of variation of form her shapes reference the organic language of modernist abstraction while also reading us cartoon-like figures with distinctive personalities. Together, th together they form an anthropomorphic family on the lawn. So for this work we have to dive a little bit deeper into the symbolism of the work and the meaning. I looked online and read some extra literature that talked about how each of these uh, bunnies uh, also represents an artist uh, that is a very, uh, one of, a very well recognized artist from the Italian, uh, from Italian culture. They have names for example here Michelangelo is represented, Guido Reni and a couple of others as well. And they are all, as you can see, they all look alike but at the same time they have these subtle variations and they have also this connection to these, uh, to these other particular uh, artists. So in a way, not uh, bundling them all together, but at the same time connecting them in this very particular way that bridge that brings them together instead of emphasizing further individuality, brings them together, brings this collective creative experience uh, together in the language of things how we communicate and how we perceive the world around us. Uh, sometimes we care about particular individuals, but in a sense, uh, particular uh, individuality also has uh, an element that connects everything together. We are going to keep walking uh, on the park and taking a look at the other artworks that are on exhibit in the space. This is another work in the exhibit is by an artist named Michael Dean. He is also British and it's called For Show. The number four and the letters S-H-O. And the literature that we have over here tells us that Michael Dean creates physical objects that originate from his own text and design typographies. While this four-shaped sculpture explores the conversion of language from word to form, no dictionary accompanies the work, allowing for an open-ended dialogue between object, object and interpreter. So let's take a closer look at it and look at it from different angles as well to see what this is. So this is basically the number four uh, that has been uh, that, that was written down and has been giving. Um, uh, an extra materiality to it. It hasn't been made three-dimensional. I don't know, like I don't think I see a number four. Uh, so yeah, from here maybe. So there you go, the four and uh, the stick at the bottom or the lower section there. It also looks like an eight. But it depends on the way that the artist uh, writes it. So very particular elements, you know how sometimes we have, um, we go through our lives and we write our goals and our aspirations, we write them down so to bring them into physicality in the, uh, in the future. It's, uh, it's very particular because uh, that actually works and in this, uh, this work over here in For Show, we have a physical element that reinforces that notion in our, in our psyche in our experience. So maybe I don't, maybe um, if you have an idea in mind, something that you want to bring into fruition, something that you want to bring into manifestation, write it down and uh, keep looking at it and organize a plan as to how to manifest it. 
because it for sure works. It works for show, uh, for real, like really, it, it does work. And in this work we see this uh, manifesting. Directly across from this work we also have another one. This one is called Lingam. There's this fence that is now separating it. So I'll try to take a look at it from this uh, point over here. It's composed of I-beams, uh, those elements that are used in uh, construction. And right next to it, there's a piece of petrified wood attached to it. There's also a sign over here. Let's take a look at it and see what it's about. This is by an artist from Switzerland, Carol Bovey. It's called Lingam. And the literature that we have over here tells us that a lingam is a symbolic object, uh, particularly in Eastern traditions in India, uh, uh, phallic figures that uh, represent uh, regenerative processes in India, lingams, as uh, oftentimes libations are poured on top of it, and this is uh, to reinforce uh, those uh, that particular masculine element of creation. A lingam, a symbolic object representing the Hindu god Shiva. These worship abstract phalluses are understood to possess mysterious and spiritual forces, allowing them to speak beyond their form. Carol Bowie's sculpture, with its seemingly floating block of petrified wood, speaks of this transformative phenomenon, one marked by time and nature, communicating the mystical power of an object. Yes, and objects do have mystical qualities. For example, here in New York, it's, it's, this place is filled with objects. It's filled with uh, structures. For example, look at all these buildings. All of these buildings, uh, what's holding them together is the skeleton, the steel skeleton that very likely, in all likelihood, resembles this form over here, the shape of the I-beam. The I-beam in the late 19th century, early 20th century revolutionized the way we do constructions because uh, since them, since they were, uh, since they came into existence, it, is, it became possible to build incredibly tall structures. Now, this element of transformation, I mean, all these structures are serving a purpose. People are working inside of these buildings, people are living their lives and creating the world that we wish to manifest. And this idea of transformation in this particular work is uh, communicated with this piece of petrified wood, a piece of wood that uh, through a very long pro uh, through in time became a uh, stone. Here we have it. I hope I'm making sense with some of these observations. Uh, if you have any insight, I encourage you to leave it in the comment section, either on Facebook or on YouTube. And to keep on with the dialogue, I subscribe to the to the YouTube uh, to my YouTube channel. And if you are on Facebook, if you have a Facebook account, uh, like the Facebook page so that we can keep engaged and uh, we can keep uh, in this dialogue looking at the things that define uh, our public spaces. Uh, we're going to head out of the park briefly and then come back inside. We'll be taking a look at, I think, one or two other works and then from here we're gonna call it a day. Again, this exhibit that we've been looking at has been up since June and today, September 29th, is the last day. They'll soon take it down at the end of the day, more than likely. And in the not so distant future, another exhibit will come along and I'll be here to uh, take a look at it and explore the ideas communicated with these visual elements. Here we have another view of the fountain, now I'm entering from the eastern side. Notice the gas lamps as well, over on the corners of the park. I mean, electricity dominates today, but these lamps that we see here are actually operated with gas. I don't think they're on right now. These are actual gas lamps. Beautiful fountain. And uh, now here we have another one. So in this central section of the garden, which by the way is very nicely planted, uh, this considering the time of the year, 
Uh, there's another art installation. This one consists of these signs that we see here. But before we take a look at them, let's take a look at what this actually is. Because this one is the one that I've had the, not the most difficult time, but slightly the most, the more difficult time understanding it. Uh, this is by Hannah Wiener, an artist from Rhode Island, uh, and and it's called Cold Poems. Cold Poems in the 1960s, renowned poet uh, Hannah Wiener created a series of found poems using the International Code of Signals, Morse code, semaphores, and maritime signal flags. For Wiener, these coded communications were unhindered by distance, origin, or language, allowing for a universal language of abstract visual and oral signs. These poems were first shown by Wiener as public performances in Central Park, with the poet hiring U.S. Coast Guardmen to sign using flags, lights, and folk horns. Okay, so now I get a better idea. This artist uses... Um, um, signs to communicate her poetry. For example, this uh, block of symbols that we see here, in a sense, communicates this that we have, that we can see right over here. Let's see, let's take a look at the other one, because this one is Morse code, if I'm not mistaken. This one might be a easier to understand. Uh, so, uh, square, circle, circle, long square, circle, circle, square, long square, square. So, symbols to communicate these particular ideas. I don't know if this directly corresponds, these words over here directly corresponds to the symbols. Let me see one. Um. I definitely uh, have heard Morse code before where with a system of uh, tapping and pausing you are able to communicate uh, uh, specific ideas, concepts and even communicate very specific information, complex information even. Now this uh, having this system being applied to poetry is even the more particular because poetry is uh, a very particular creative medium that also communicates to the emotion. So to see this, uh, it's, it's just nice to be able to see all these different uh, ways that language is able to be expressed. Now there is one last exhibit that we'll be taking a look at, and it's directly over here by the entrance of the park. Uh, before we take a look at it, let's also notice the landscape uh, surrounding us the architecture in the distance there, that building that you see under construction, is building number three at the World Trade Center. The World Trade Center will consist of five buildings total, uh, skyscrapers. Right next to it, that other building that is completed, uh, it's building number four. It's 74 stories tall, 78 if you count the four ground levels or the four levels that are directly below the ground level. Another view of the of the Woolworth building, again this building that from 1913 up until 1929 was the tallest building in the world. So here it is, this is the last uh, work that we'll be taking a look at today. Is, if I'm not mistaken, inspired by Hannah Wiener's uh, po poetry. The only thing is that instead of a sign, this one has to be giving a uh, physicality to it. Uh, incredible materiality to it. Again, uh, we see squares, uh, long squares, rectangles, and circles. Uh, kind of like a sort of code uh, communicating this very same idea of uh, poetry. Let's take a look at the sign over there to gain more insight as to what it is that this communicates. It's called, it's untitled actually, and that dynamic even makes it more 
more particular because that means that uh, it could be open to interpretation or we can bring our own interpretation to it. This artist is from Virginia, Adam Pandleton is his name. Um, untitled again, uh, Adam, Pad Adam Pandleton's work often draws on the language and the history of its use as an artistic medium. Influenced by Hannah Wiener's cold poems, this new sculpture, referencing Morse code, takes the form of large-scale dots and dashes. However, the code is indecipherable, becoming an unknown form of abstract pattern and uh, concrete geometric forms which present the complexities of a universal translation and understanding. So yes, again, uh, open to interpretation. Uh, let's see that if let, next time that you hear a poem, or let's say people who are looking at this, if they have heard a poem before in their lives, this could very well, in creative terms, this could very well be that poem that they were exposed to. And again, using this uh, language of signs and uh, symbols, uh, Morse code has been brought into, has been made material in this particular work by Adam Paddleton. Another view of City Hall Park from this particular vantage point. In the distance there we see City Hall, uh, the municipal building of New York as well. Uh, beautiful and beautiful art as well. For example, at the top of the municipal building, that sculpture that you see there is called the Civic Fame, an allegorical figure that represents New York. All right, that's going to be it for today's video blog. Uh, thank you everyone for your attention. For more videos, log on to 5theguide.com. Uh, if on YouTube, subscribe to my channel for automatic updates. If on Facebook, like uh, the Facebook page where I'll be posting information on historical uh, facts about New York City, uh, aided with visuals, photographs, uh, paintings, and these video blogs as well, and also to communicate. I want to know from you what you think about these particular works that hundreds of thousands, if not even, if not, if not millions of people are being exposed to in this, the cultural capital of our planet. Have a wonderful afternoon or morning, depending where you are and when you are watching this video. Bye-bye.